Hello and welcome. My name is Mark. This is Riffle Shuffle and Roll, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to play a little card game called Kaluki. Kaluki is a rummy game for two to four players, and the way I'm going to be teaching you is based on Bicycle's official rules. Let's dive in and get started. You will need two standard 52 card decks, and you will include the jokers, so you will have two jokers from each deck. To set up for the game, Determine a dealer. That player needs to shuffle the deck and then deal 15 cards to each player. The rest of the deck is placed face down as a draw pile. Turn the top card over to begin the discard pile. We will play that the dealer is here at the bottom of the screen. Player left of the dealer gets to go first, so player one is here on the left side of the screen. There are two types of melds in this game. The first is known as a run. A run is three or more cards in the same suit and in sequential order. So here's a run, two, three, four, or jack, queen, king. In this game, aces can be both low, sitting below the two, or high, sitting above the king. But they cannot be used to go around the corner. So the meld queen, king, ace, two, three is illegal. The other type of meld is called a set. A set is three or more cards of the same rank. Since this game uses a double deck, it is possible for multiple cards of the same rank and suit to be in the meld. So for example, here we have a set of threes and two of them are three of spades. And of course, jokers are wild, so they can be used to represent any card needed for the meld. The jokers take on the value of the card they're replacing, and that's gonna be important when determining the value of your first meld. So in this set of threes, the joker would be worth three. Up here, the joker's replacing a king, so it would be worth 10 points. Speaking of points, let's get into what these cards are worth. Knowing the point values of the cards is important because a player's first meld must be 51 points or more. So numbered cards are worth the value of the number on the card. So twos are worth two, threes are worth three, and so on. Face cards are all worth 10 points, and aces are worth 15, regardless of whether they're being played as low or high. They are worth 15 points. And again, jokers take on the value of the card they're replacing. So if they replace an ace, they're worth 15. If they replace a two, they're only worth two. A player begins their turn by drawing a card. If they have not played a meld that is 51 points or more, they can only draw from the draw pile. Now there is one little exception to that. If the top card from the discard pile would allow them to immediately create a meld that is 51 points or more, they may draw it and do so. But until that point, a player can only draw from the draw pile. Once they have played a 51 point meld, then they can draw from either the draw pile or take the top card from the discard pile. So player one is actually set up here to be able to build a 55 point meld if they take that king of spades. So you can see they have nine jack and queen of spades along with the ace of spades and a joker. So they're gonna use that joker as a 10 and form the run nine, 10, jack, queen, king, ace, which is 55 points. So they draw the king of spades and they can do this because they can immediately make a meld that is 51 points or more. So here you can see player one was actually able to build a 64 point meld. It was only 55 with the 10 up through the ace. They also had the nine of spades. So with that 64 point meld, they can lay it down. Now it's important to remember two things. First of all, players are able to lay off on your melds. Uh, the only person that's gonna earn points at the end of the round is the player that goes out and empties their hand first. So keep that in mind when laying melds on the table, other people are gonna be able to add to them. Also, once a joker is laid on the table in a meld, an opponent can replace that joker with the actual card that could fit in that meld. And then they can use the joker immediately to make a meld of their own. So for example, if player two had the 10 of spades and they wanted that joker to make a meld immediately, 
they could lay the Ten of Spades in the meld, take the Joker, and then use it to make a meld of their own. So as more Jokers are down on the table in melds, the more they're going to be passed around and used to create new melds, essentially speeding up the game and allowing other players to play melds and go out. Player one is gonna end their turn with a discard. They are discarding the Seven of Clubs. After player one discards, play passes here to player two. Now they do not have any melds that the Seven of Clubs would help to allow them to lay their opening meld on the table. So they are not allowed to draw that. They must draw from the top of the draw pile. And they got the Two of Clubs. They're gonna go ahead and hang on to that. They cannot make their opening meld, so they only have one choice. They can discard. And they will go ahead and discard the Five of Hearts. And now it is player three's turn. Now, unfortunately, they need that five of hearts. It would really help them out, but that would only give them a 49 point meld. If they use that Joker, they'd be able to go four through 10, but that's only 49 points. So they can't draw that five of hearts from the discard pile. They are limited to the top of the draw pile. Now, well, look at that. They drew the five of hearts from the top of the draw pile. They're gonna go ahead and add that card to their hand. Again, it's not enough points to give them that opening meld. And they're gonna go ahead and discard a four of spades. Let's fast forward a little bit and see how jokers can be stolen from existing melds. We see player one has created another meld. They've made a meld of queens using a joker. It is now player two's turn and some interesting stuff is going to happen. So they still haven't made their opening meld of 51 points or more. They cannot take the two even if they wanted it. They must draw from the top of the draw pile. So that's what they do. And they got an important card. They received the eight of spades. So they are now in a position where they can make some magic happen. They're gonna take their queen and replace it with the Joker in that set of Queens that player one has. Then they are going to get the Joker in return and lay down their 51 point meld. And here's the meld they were able to make. Eight, nine, 10, Jack, Queen, King. This is actually a 57 point meld. The player is able to lay this meld down. Now they are eligible for laying off on other people's melds and drawing the top card from the discard pile. Player two ends their turn by discarding the Jack of Clubs. Play then passes left. The game ends once a player is able to go out. There are two ways to do this. First, they can play their final cards to the table as a meld, emptying their hand. That ends the round immediately. And the other way to go out is to discard your final card, which will empty your hand and end the round. The player who goes out first wins the round and will earn points. Let's see how to keep score. The player who goes out first earns points for the cards remaining in their opponent's hands. Numbered cards are worth the value of the number on the card. So twos are worth two points, threes are worth three points, and so on. Face cards are worth 10 points each. Aces are worth 15 points each. And don't get caught with a joker left in your hand because your opponent will earn 25 points for that card. As an example, let's say that player three emptied their hand first, they went out and won the round. So they're gonna get points for the cards left in their opponent's hands. Player three will earn 74 points for the round. Once the score for the round has been tallied up, collect the cards and the deal passes left. Continue playing rounds until one player reaches an agreed upon score. Typically 250 for a shorter game or 500 for a longer game. The first player to reach that score wins. And that's how to play Kaluki. Now, if you're already familiar with the game Kaluki and you're just watching this video because you're interested in the game, you'll realize that it is completely different than what you're gonna find when searching online for Kaluki. Kaluki is a contract rummy game in which the contracts change each round. At least that's what I tend to find when I look up this game. However, in Bicycle's Official Rules of Card Games book, uh, last published in 2000, I believe, or somewhere thereabouts. This is the Kaluki that they described. Well, that's all I have for Kaluki. I hope you found this video helpful. Until next time, keep on playing.